So you got the debut LP out. Things are going. You're getting on good tours, right? Playing good shows. Yeah, everything was good. And like, yeah, uh, Best of Me eventually like started popping. Like when we started playing shows, it was kind of like eventually became the closer. And um, like, I I kind of get it now. Like, I think that there's some sort of message that I didn't even really intend at the time, but like, it seems to just like mirror like the idea of like eternal youth which is something that's like very attractive to like, you know, people that still really love pop punk, which I, you know, it's nice. It's like, I, uh, I like that. It's got that tie into, to like the whole scene. Yeah. I feel that I didn't even, I didn't even know the band back in the day, but I hear that now and I have instantly have that feeling. So there, there has to be some kind of tie in there. Yeah, it's nice. It was like, I mean, I really just wanted to like fill a page back then. So it's like, I don't, <laughs> I'm just glad that that it's uh you know it's it's held up for people. So what do you write about when you're that young? What's going on in your life? That's what's on your mind back then is like when you're that age you want you know you have like love interests and like unrequited crushes and shit like that. So yeah, there's uh, like whoever like was a love interest I would just kind of like focus um several chunks of records back then but it was like i didn't even have much experience like in that it was just uh yeah just trying to like yeah it, like honestly trying to sound you know um like my idols and just try to like be like be writing on the same level as like you know the saves the day records or like the promise ring records um and that was yeah like i i think as far as approach i've always kind of just tried to write about what's going on with me. I don't really write in character or anything like that. Right. Um, I just try to like have it back then. It was a little bit more of just like a train of thought and just like get it down and like, you know, rhyme it and shit like that. And like, I try to have a little bit more purpose these days and like really flesh it out and be a little bit more like succinct about what I'm saying. But Mm -hmm. back then it was just sort of like, I was just be like, oh, is that a word? Like, am I using that word right? Like, <laughs> um, I, you know, like I wasn't like a, a, uh, an English whiz or anything like that. So it was just trying to make it like make some sort of sense. Let me ask this about the starting line. A lot of bands and some bands I've talked to, they have major label experiences and they just walk away very dissatisfied with the whole thing. Did you have anything like that? Yeah, but only when... MCA became Geffen. Then we had a really hard time with them. And that that tends to happen, you know, like there's just these like takeovers that happen or what I don't even know like the other guys might be able to tell you better than than I could, but it was basically like they were um they like transferred ownership and like MCA was just bought by Geffen and it's just like you're you're Geffen now. There is no MCA. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Okay, well, what about that guy that like, you know, we were working on the record with, he's like fired. <laughs> it's like a oh. new, new people and the, this new owner and uh, this guy, Jordan Schur, who's just like, you know, like famously just kind of like failed his way upward. I mean, I, I, I don't, <laughs> don't want to talk too much shit on the guy, but like, I mean, he was not that like great to me or anything. So I don't really have a lot of like, you know, whatever you know like i'm sure he's doing fine now like i tried to actually looking up his wikipedia and like he just kind of you know fell off the face of the earth like after doing like a few other deals i'm sure he's doing fine and that's the problem with this country (laughs) yeah yeah totally like he's i mean he really is like a trump kind of like character like he he even kind of looks like him. and it's just kind of like has that bullshit all the time where he's just like pumping himself up all the time is just telling you about all the important shit he's doing okay and just like you know and this is like a half hour of that shit before you can even begin to talk about like the record you're working on (laughs) um so like yeah I, i did not get along with this guy uh and so it's just like we we're all of a sudden like signed to this label that has like a new name and this new guy and like is you know trying to just like play us like the the newfound glory record catalyst and like be like you got to write something like this like and i'm just like what are we doing here like that's that's another band that's like on your label like you have that like yeah how about just let us you know like be our be our band you know and i wanted to be like you know probably the most experimental that I had like attempted to be in the band at that point. So it just was like two opposing forces, like meeting each other. 
But we basically just had to have a conference call with him after the release of Based on a True Story and just like asked to be released because mm-hmm. we were just, you know, really unhappy there. And it was just not obviously not a good fit. And he let us go. And like to his credit, I think that that was like the like kindest thing that he could have done for us and like didn't make a big thing about it and didn't like torture us through it. Like, so, um, you know, like he's on my good side now. And like, I, you know, it, it was like, it gives me a story to talk about it and it gave me like some <laughs> angst to write about back then. So like, I definitely do not wish him I- ill will. It just like was not a match made in heaven. <laughs> 